watching you as Red Auerbach every single time you come on the screen, it was just like a cotton candy. You just well, eat, imagine so you, 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 HBO calls you and says, hey, they're doing a show about the Red Sox and they want you to play Tori or, mm -hmm. you know, Girardi, right? Right. right. You, you, you know, you, yeah, yeah. you'd probably, probably want to do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Exciting, incredible, and I choose Tory over Girardi. Well, of course, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, clearly. I mean, if we're, as, yeah, long no, as, no, as long as we're, we're using this as a construct, <laughs> as an analogy, <laughs> you know, I, I, need to, I need to jump in here and make my choice. Sorry. I'd be Tory in any story exactly. about the you know Yankees or, yes. or anything about that. But yeah, yes. that had to be the quickest well, yes in the history of and your career. Yes. Did you get the, <laughs> the yes. Yeah, absolutely. I you know, especially when I read. When I read that second episode that has the sort of mano a mano with with uh, John C and the and Chasens, yeah, that I what a scene, what a great scene. I was like, for for this alone, that's that's great stuff. And John C. Riley is tremendous in this role. Uh, I, I think he's going to be up for every major award this year. He's just spot on for it. And uh, it, you know, look, a lot's been made of what's the accuracy of of, right. uh, of the show, I, you know, I, I know that they've vetted a lot of this out. They've spent a lot of time in this. Oh, oh there's no doubt, no question about it. Michael Chiklis yeah. here, our terrestrial radio audience just returned, and uh, we just show, saw a clip of Winning Time. And you know, uh, I, I know there's a lot of question about the history and what's real and what's not. Right. But what is real was just the experience of watching this show and watching it be acted the way that it was shot the way that it was yeah. and right. again you, the scenes with you and john c riley uh you as as red arback a lot boss. more coming because as you know the rivalry oh, gets only thicker gets, and thicker oh, no right question about it, it sets that scene right there really sets the pick for the rivalry at, uh, between the ownership you know between yeah. the, the the people in charge and it, it went from the top down it was a real true rivalry not just between the players it was everybody, you know. So when you dressed as our back oh. for the first time, okay, so where where fun. they picked out whatever, you know, horse blanket, if you will, <laughs> 80s, late 70s uh, sport coat. Yeah. And they put the, the our back hair on you and yeah. you had the stogie, the stogie. lit. Uh, what did you think of when you looked in the mirror for the first time? Well, I have like, to, like, look at that right there. I yeah, mean, get right? out of here. I think that certain characters that you play, <laughs> you know, certain characters you approach from the inside out, these are actor terms, but in sure. some you go from the outside in. And w in this case, it was definitely the outside in because as soon as, like you say, uh, once I got that wardrobe and the stogie and the hair yeah. and then the Brooklyn, <laughs> next thing you know... There he is, you know, and it really was exciting. And again, I grew up in Boston, and my father used to scream about him. He loved, now, you know, Red stopped uh, coaching, I believe it was in 66, and I, I was a kid, I was three years old. Mm -hmm. But he was always, he was ever present, especially at, when he was the president of the team. Mm -hmm. He was just around, he was always there, and you, you couldn't miss him, look at him. You know, <laughs> in a crowd, you couldn't miss that guy. And you say 70s costuming, that's, I didn't know anybody who dressed like that even right. then. <laughs> he was, you know what I mean? He was unique even then with those, he was just gaudy and audacious. And can you imagine in this day and age, someone lighting up a stogie with three minutes left in the game? <laughs> <laughs> it would go everywhere. No, like, it would go absolutely everywhere. Like, what's he thinking? What's he How doing? dare he? How dare, what, 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 right. what are the fence, you know? And then you hear all the stories. <laughs> You know, about the, the, the windows being glued shut and the AC <laughs> turned off. Exactly. Can you imagine first take the next day? Oh. Did Red Auerbach show up his opponents lighting a cigar <laughs> <laughs> three minutes yeah. to go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Really, as an actor, this is just, I'm, I'm just delicious. You're red meat, man, and you Del chewed it up. You chewed it up. And again, the scene with the scenes with you and John C. Riley together, like two of fantastic actors. In the role of two pop culture iconic individuals that you would never think would be portrayed on a TV show, right? And then again, the scene where one of the first scenes you mentioned, Chasen's Restaurant here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. where Bus is whining and dining, Red Auerbach, thinking 
that you could be the same type of mark as everybody else in his life where, you know, women and that sort of allure of L.A. lifestyle would be able, you'd be reeled in as Red yeah. back and no, like you're the adult who just wants to win and rip his heart out and you essentially telling him that. I watched that scene three times over because oh, it was fantastic. Just really great. Well, again, man. like, you know, uh, everything starts on the page, right? Yes. And I have to say, Max Bornstein, he's a tremendous writer, really, really talented. And you don't get dialogue like this. You know, the, so that, well, again, when I read that scene, I just went, oh, okay. You know, I get to I get to do this. And on top of it, Jonah Hill directed the episode. Is that right? Yeah. That's right, that episode. Yeah, okay. which was hilarious in and of itself. How and the so? Stories. What do you well, mean? I mean, it just, the, just, it just, the directions that he gave me. All right, now just just terrify him right now in this take. Just absolutely. <laughs> like he come over and whisper in my ear and just like, you know. So John C. Riley doesn't hear? Yeah, so he doesn't hear. Just absolutely terrorize him now. You know, I'm like, okay, John, go ahead. Well, you <laughs> did. <laughs> I, I mean, you did. We had, you know, it's just a fun process and really, really talented folks. And from everybody, everybody, the DP, everybody is really, really good. Yeah, you know. and and um, you know Celtics are up next in this story. Um, <sighs> uh, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about now, but back in the day. Well, they're we'll up get to that, right? Oh, yeah, we're right, right, right. <laughs> we're, we're, they're, they're they're up next in the story. They win next, if I'm not mistaken. We after we just watched the Lakers win and Magic is the MVP. The Celtics are up next because right. Magic gets hurt, and then Riley comes in, and I can't wait for the scene when when Adrian Brody finally slicks his hair back <laughs> right, and exactly. becomes Pat and you know Riley gonna, in the Armani yeah, suits. You, you know, know this is all happen. coming, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, when just uh, one last question on this: When do you start shooting? When does this happen? When uh, do we get? When do we get more we of the show? You know, shooting. My understanding is uh, late August, early September. Back at it. We're back at it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> we got to come to set one. Dude, what are you doing in five? What do you don't, mean? What are you it's talking about? Like don't crash. Friends of the set, and then we come down, we shoot a little behind the scenes, and, oh, we, okay. and we hold it until the I think the HBO's episode. got their own BTS thing, but we can try. We can Send try. Send me a text, man. I'll see what I can okay. do. That's what I mean. All right. <laughs> Let's see. I, I, so I, here I, we go. So you're going to be. Don't get what you don't ask for, it. So you're getting the cigars back. You're getting the whole thing back. And well, here we go. you know, I have to say I'm a little concerned about the cigars because I did quit smoking cigars 20 years ago. Uh oh. Are they real cigars? That, 22 years were, ago. Were they real cigars? No. Ah, no. They, they have a they have a a, a tobacco wrapper, but it's it's a cacophony of crap inside it. It tastes like the bottom of a shoe. Ah. It's just not okay. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, they, they put in it. I don't even want to know. It's horrible. What they make me smoke, and they on top of it, they have me huffing that sucker too. Yeah, right, of course. You know, well, I mean, in John C. Riley's smoking cig cigarettes, you can even hear it burning. Like you could hear, yeah, it, yeah, you yeah. can hear these cigarettes burning yeah, in some of these cloves. scenes. Those are no cloves bueno, oh, no bueno at all. God. No, and you know, uh, I love the way they shoot it though, in like five different formats. Yes, really give you a sense of the period and the feel of it. I love it, everything about the way they're making the show and the where I can see where it's going. And Max has told me some things about what, well, you guys are going to love it. I can't swear. No, it's Sorry. it's incredible. <laughs> it really is. We, it we is. have enjoyed it. And again, we know it's that, awesome. you know, certain L.A. Lakers in this town uh, aren't very happy with their portrayals and things of that nature. But it is incredibly entertaining. I've enjoyed every single minute of it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.